Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be telling you guys about what the freshman dorms of Vanderbilt are like. Two years ago, I was a senior in high school, finishing up the school year. I was in all of the class of 2022 Facebook groups, trying to figure out who my roommate was gonna be, and generally just what the dorms were like at Vanderbilt. And I remember that even when I could find some pictures here and there online, what I really wanted was like a detailed overview of what all the different dorm options were for freshmen, what the housing assignment process and move-in process were like, what each dorm was like, which ones were the good ones, which one were the bad ones, all that stuff. So today, I'm going to tell you guys everything I know about all the freshman dorms. Typically housing assignments for freshmen come out in early August So with this video, you'll be able to know what the dorm you get assigned is really like what the amenities are How big it is what its general reputation is and I have photos of the inside and outside of all the dorms As well as the average size of the dorms whether or not they have laundry and study spaces And I'm gonna share all of this with you guys in this video. All right, let's get started So freshman move-in is always on the second to last weekend of August and basically you get assigned a move-in time That's between 7 a.m. And 12 p.m. You get your house your room assignment information all that stuff Stuff. And usually you get all that information on or before August 1st. And what happens is you pull up in your car with your family through the roundabout in front of your house and there's a whole team called the move crew and the move crew helps you get all the stuff out of your car puts it in little carts and brings it to your room with you everybody's dancing and singing and it's a really fun time I remember when I had my move-in day at Vanderbilt I just felt so welcomed and it really gets everyone excited so in terms of roommates this is the first year that all roommate assignments will be random so in past years like my year you had the Facebook group where you could see everyone's posts people wrote about what they like to do where they're from all that stuff and then you could pick your roommate from that but from now on all roommate assignments will be random which I don't know if that's gonna be a good thing or not I mean it definitely helped to be able to select your own roommate so you get a roommate randomly assigned to you based on this survey that you two fill out and the survey asks questions like what time do you go to bed what time do you wake up do you want your room to be more social or more of a study space that kind of thing and that way you get someone who matches with like your daily routine so there's basically two classifications of dorms. There's the old dorms and the new dorms. The old dorms were built in like the 1920s or 30s and then renovated in 2006. And the new dorms were built from scratch in 2006. So the new dorms have all the amenities, bigger rooms, nicer rooms and bathrooms, just overall a better experience. But every freshman dorm has air conditioning, some sort of study space, music practice rooms, and security at night. So I'll just start out with West House. This was the house that I was in. And here's a picture of the outside of West House. And I just have some key information about each dorm that I'll tell you guys. So West House is one of the smallest dorms and it only has 120 students. It has three stories and it has its own laundry. West House is one of the older houses, which means that the floors are wooden instead of tiled, which is nice. But also the rooms are smaller than in the newer dorms. The typical room size in West is between 140 and 235 square feet. And in the older dorms, you have hinged closets in some of the rooms which here's a picture of my closet which is almost entirely like pink and white clothes with hinged closets you get more space for your clothes which is actually a plus of the older dorms and here's a picture of my room in West so my room was on the second floor and it was the center room which actually meant that it was one of the smallest rooms in all of West so it doesn't get any smaller than this but I did have enough space that I didn't have to loft my bed all the way up and I could keep my desk on the side of my bed instead of underneath it which is something that I really wanted to do but my roommate did loft her bed up and put her desk under it to make more space for other things Next is North, which is right across from West. North has 176 students, so it's a little bit bigger than West. And it has six stories. And because it's one of the older dorms, it also has wood floors and a lot of the closets are hinged. The thing about North is that it has no laundry, which really sucks. So people get used to it. It's not like the end of the world, but it definitely sucks at the beginning. And basically people just bring their laundry over to West and do it in West. The typical room size in North is 111 to 310 square feet. So a little bigger than West House. And here's a picture I found on line of a room in North House. So as you can see, it's a little bigger, you have a little more space in the middle. And then moving on to East House. East House is really small, it only has 100 students in it. It has three stories, and because it's one of the older dorms as well, it has wood floors. East also has no laundry. So people who live in East do their laundry at a nearby dorm. The typical room size in East is between 159 to 290 square feet. Um, so it's basically the same size rooms as West House. And this was actually the only dorm that I couldn't find photos online of what the rooms looked like, but basically the same size as West. The next house is Memorial, so it's another old dorm. Memorial is the smallest of all the dorms. It has only 80 students. And Memorial has these really fun s'mores themed nights every week. So they have like a party in the lawn in front of it with s'mores and music and 
people from all different houses come to it. Unfortunately, Memorial also has no laundry in it. So people go to the dorm next to it, which is Gillette, which I'll go over next to do their laundry. Here's a photo of my friend's dorm room who lived in Memorial last year. The rooms in Memorial are definitely more spacious than some of the older dorms, which is really nice. And the typical room size for a Memorial room is between 136 to 245 square feet. The next house is Gillette. Gillette is the last of the old houses and Gillette has quite the reputation. Gillette houses 220 students and the rooms are tiny. The typical room size is between 136 to 220 square feet. And here's a picture I found online of what a dorm room in Gillette looks like. In terms of room size, Gillette is really the worst option that you could be assigned to, but it has a really nice central location right next to the common center. And it seems like every year the people who live in Gillette get really close with each other. There's a really strong sense of community in Gillette, which is really nice. So don't be sad if you get Gillette. Even though the rooms are really small, people get really close and end up being fine with it. And also Gillette has its own laundry in the building, which is really nice. Now we are moving on to the newer houses. Hank is known as like the best house on Commons. It's huge, it has 290 students and seven stories. Like the rest of the newer homes, there are study rooms on every floor and big common areas where people get together and hang out. All of the newer dorms have wall closets only, so they don't have the hinged closets and also have tiled floors instead of wooden floors. And also all of the new dorms have in-house laundry. The typical size for a room in Hank is between 167 to 269 square feet. And here's a picture I found of a room in Hank. Not sure if you can really see in the photo but the ceilings are really tall and the rooms are really spacious. In Hank you never like have to loft your bed and also just generally like the bathrooms are new and nice and Hank is in a central location right next to the common center. The next of the new houses is Sutherland. Sutherland has 180 students and five stories. The rooms are really spacious. The typical room size is between 201 and 290 square feet. Here's a picture of one of my good friend's rooms in Sutherland. As you can see just a lot of extra space. No need to loft the bed or anything. Next to Samba or Stam. Stam also has 180 students. Just like Sutherland, the typical room size is 201 square feet to around 310 square feet. And here's a picture I found of an empty room of Stam. I personally think that the wood floors in the older dorms look nicer than the tile floors in the newer dorms, but I guess I'd rather have tile floors and more space than wood floors and a tiny room. Next is Murray House, which holds 150 students. The typical room size is between 196 to 315 square feet. And here's a picture of an empty room I found online of Murray. So again, just nice and spacious. And lastly, Crawford, which holds 150 first year students, and the typical room size is between 191 to 235 square feet. And here's a picture I found of a room inside Crawford, which again, just has plenty of space. I also wanted to give you guys an overall map of Commons. So here's what Commons looks like. It's its own campus away from main campus. And kind of the main building on Commons is the Common Center, where you have the dining hall, the Munchie Mart, the gym. And so most of the newer dorms are closer to Commons, kind of on that side. That's where we have Hank, Stan Sutherland, Murray and Crawford. And then the older dorms are on the other side and that's where we have North, East, West, Gillette, and Memorial. I feel like the best like, places to be location-wise are like Hank, Memorial, Gillette, those kind of like centrally located dorms. Thing is, even though these dorms in this little square area are really nice, they're kind of like out of it. Like they're in their own little world. Like, I don't know, my freshman year, I didn't really go to that area very often. All right, well, that's my overview of all the freshman dorms. When I get back to campus in the fall, I'd love to make a video where I go into all the freshman dorms so that you guys can see what it's really like inside all of them. But the information I shared with you guys in this video is kind of what I would have wanted when I was going into my freshman year. So I hope it was helpful. And comment below any other things you guys are wondering about Vanderbilt or video ideas you guys want me to do. If you want to see more stuff like this, hit subscribe. See you guys next time.